Xiao Xiang Hao, and we, we are very happy and to presentation about our uh, science elevation guide to you, and also uh, congratulate you have an annual forum in Hainan Island. Mm. Uh, I prepared the, some topic as uh, minimalism in science. And uh, because and uh, through the last 30 years experience of the science augmentations, we have a relatively very good higher success rate. But sometimes we have also have failures, like a perforation, sinusitis, and also infections. So, uh, we wish to do, introduce the very simplified guideline for the science augmentation. However, GP to success very highly. So, topic is uh, minimalism and also sinus elevation guide. This is uh, one of the video we have taken during the surgery on for identitous cases. When you place the implant in the upper posterior side, in many cases we meet the sinus cavities. So we need some elevation of them. So however we do retro approaches, it's a relatively very simple, just very simply grinding out the labial side and the step-by-step -step detachment of the membrane from the smaller size of the instrument to a larger size of the instrument. And the tip of the instrument must be touched inside the bony wall. If not touched at the time, there will, will be a perforation. And also, perforation became to be widened. So anyway, the tip of the instrument must be contacts inside the bone walls of the sinus cavity. And we have changed the large instrument. And before also we are doing a bone off techniques, but nowadays we are using a bone grinding techniques in a smaller one hole less than one centimeters and without any membrane coverages is uh, very successful. And the, also about the bone graft material, also we before we grafted the particulate bones, but nowadays with the osteon 3 collagen, there is a particulate bone in, in, combined with the collagen membrane is very convenient to the news. And with the ostensory collagens, maintain the volume after the sinus augmentation, and that are good enough for the bone formation inside the sinus. And recently also we have developed uh, new implant systems, bright implants, bright implant. And that have a bone level and tissue level, Bone level is very compatible with the Implantium 2 introduced in the China. Implantium 2 or bone level of the bright implant system is good enough you know, for the sinus. Shortly, and the small diameter is a very good success rate into the sinus. Also, another size. Uh, side and we tried to making a flap that from the crystal incisions and the, from the mucogingival junction areas to reduce the trauma and because we do just uh, sinus augmentations without any implantation so we are making a very small incisions on the labia side also sometimes there would be a perforations at the time, try to make a little bit widen the grinding and detach it from the perforation areas far away. And so isolation of the perforation side 
site. And uh, finally, we do elevate the sinus membrane very successfully. And the tip is contacts inside the bony wall very tightly to prevent the perforations. And sometimes we can do widened and if that hole grinding is over the one centimeters, usually we do coverages with a collagen membrane or collagen graft. After the elevation from the perforation site, and finally the perforation holes became to be passive and not to be widened anymore. And also about the detachment of the membrane. Before we tried to elevate to the medial side, in, inner side, and but nowadays, and the sinus membrane have also bone formation potentials. So we are just three very uh, small sizes, sinus augmentation, and the small volume of the bone graft into the for the sinus augmentation side. And the, yes, as you already know. Before, when you do elevation, we have to do too much bone graft onto the sinus. But nowadays, we try to minimize the bone graft material into the sinus. Like this. Yeah, not so much. Yes, finished. And the, the, the key word of the today's presentation is uh, minimal invasive surgery and the short implant and the guideline can be changed and also uh, Austin 3 collagen is very convenient for them. And the implant, about the implant selection. If you use the implant into or shoe lines, and the especially implant into is good for the sinus elevation, eight millimeter length and four point zero diameter of the of the bone level implant is good for the single molars. Implantium is stronger than two is stronger than shoe line. Usually, when you place the implant in the posterior molar, we recommend it over the 4.5 millimeters. But if you use the implant in two, 4.0 millimeters, diameter is good enough for the single molar. And also, we have a tissue level implant, and that is stronger than bone level implant. So we can use the 3.5 millimeter diameters for the single molars. Some, so implant selection is very important for the post, posterior part and the short, because that is became to be shorter and the smaller. Uh, as you already know, the surface treatment, SLA is good enough and the thread became to be prominent so with a 3.0 tissue level is good in, enough for the molars and the 4.0 bone level and can be used in the posterior molars, single molars. And in these cases, and the length is palm 8 millimeters, shoe frame, diameter around 4.5 or 5.0s is uh, good enough into the sinus and the bone graft materials. Austin 3 collagen is very well matured. But on this side, you must do augmentations. So another two sources missed. 
So there is a bone contour like this. So one side is uh, or less than four millimeters, and another side is uh, around uh, six millimeters. So we can do crestal approaches or lateral approaches. But in this case, it's due to some population during the crestal approaches, we change it into the lateral approaches. So at first, we do a lot of the bone graft materials. But finally, that was very matured during the waiting and the prosthetic works. And the length is the seven millimeters bright implant system. And if you use the implantium tool, at that time you can use the eight millimeters. So in China, we have a certificate of the shoe line and the implantium two, but implantium two is better than shipline in strength. Strength is a higher in the implantium two, 4.0 can be used. But shipline two sometimes can be used but some limitations. So we use it for single molar. 4.5 millimeters diameters. So uh, if you became to be formula, same drilling, almost the same. So if you are became to implant him too, there is a much more benefit compared to the ship line. Uh, after the final processes, with the full control of the zirconia and the very well matured bone, full control of the zirconia, Zirconia have a much less less plaque, plaque accumulation. So we have uh, some guideline drawn by our steps and uh, one four four millimeters right row approaches, four to six millimeters crest row approaches. Over the six millimeters at that time, we try to do by cortical fixations. In this situation, we make a window and the bone grafting and the crystal approaches through the drilling hole. We making some bone and the lateral spreading is a very important key factor. And in this case, by cortical fixation, we phrase the implant a little bit one or two millimeters penetrated into the sinus with the two cortical layer from the alveolar crest and the lower border of the sinus is a very good fixation of the uh, implant. So another is, is the same sinus elevation guide as a repetition. If the remaining bone thickness and the one to four millimeters later approaches and the temporary loadings and the three to six months. But if the remaining bone height is four to six millimeters, we can approach to the right or crest. And the in situation is the crest approaches and the temporal rolling two for four months. Over the five to six millimeters by cortical fixations, at the time we usually do a normal loadings protocol, like a one to three months later loading. Today's, uh, after introduction, today's contents is uh, lateral approaches, crestal approaches, by cortical fixation. After that, I will do the presentation of the hand joints, if you have time. This is a lateral approaches, lateral uh, <laughs> approaches to make a window, and the, after grinding out, bone grafting, And we have recently developed for task simple. Is a instrument is a much smaller, thirty percent smaller, and the only three drills or four drills is good enough for the sinus. Very simple drill, and the diamond diamond coating. Is safe to contact with the membrane. 
but still due to some roughness. And when you do approach to the lateral hole, at first in the outside, but became to be contact with the membrane. After that, we do grinding out in the inner side. Also, TB is very small, became to be smaller, and the, with that, and we can do grinding out of the labial walls in a smaller size. This is a case. The bone around the 4 millimeters, and the alveolology is good enough. So after the sinus segmentation, and the bo finally bone became to be matured well, and with a temporary crown, the bone graft material was the osteon 3 collagen. Is good for the sinus segmentation. Also, length is the seven millimeters. So even in posterior side, seven or eight millimeters. Eight millimeters of the implantium tool, and the diameter is four point zero is good enough for the sinus. Uh, after the conventional incisions and the pull retraction and the lateral grinding with the diamond ball and the initial detachment with the round instrument and the step by step with the large instrument we finally elevate the membrane and the Austin 3 collagen and just the filling without any membrane coverages and the implantation and after insertion of the implant at the time we used the alveology too much wide so we press the diameter 4.0 lens is a 7 millimeters implant and the insertion and the suture were after that finished six months later after the second stage surgery And the, this is the scan of the wound. And with that, we intraoral scanning or bite tray impression and the scanning. Two is available with the polymers because the, there is a flat surfaces. That is for stitching procedures. And in this case, we take an intraoral scanning. And through the stitching processes, we can find the exact implant position. Uh, over there, we're making a custom abutment and the final uh, temporary crown over there. Uh, designing on a CAD, X CAD, and the efforts to try to press the temporary crown and for the adaptation of the opposite tooth and the navel tooth and the temporal mandibular joint. Because the, after missing of the tooth, the patient does not chew on this side for a long time. So the patient usually bite on the end of the side, so with a temporary and for the adaptation of the adjacent tooth and the opposite tooth and the temporal mandibular joint. And for the final processes, we can do IO intraoral scanning or bite tray impression and scanning. In this case, usually, this is good for the temporary because the patient is very interesting to the distals. But actually, for the finals, bite tray impression is much more exact in occlusion. We're taking a scan of the month. And for the right can be attached uh, approach to the end, so with the cutting. Sometimes a little bit over cutting. And the spraining. And after the scanning. And the, through the stitching processes, we can find this uh, select the abutment and the final crown designing, very similarly to the temporary crown, and the zirconia milling, and the centering, 
and finally grazing. And after finally insertion into the mouse, and the hole became to be fielded. At the time, if you use the zirconia primer, and after the resin filling, and the later process, the bone is a little bit less than three millimeters, so it's a very good indications for the later approaches. In this side, a little bit by cortical fixation and the vidus bone grafting and also a little bit GBR procedures. Another side is a bright tissue level, diameter 4.0 and the length is the 9 millimeters implant. After processes, bone is maintained well and also into the sinus cavity and 1.4 millimeters very thin, so little bit by cortical fixation, very good initial stability, and with the holes and the bone grafting into the sinus. Crystal incisions, due to some cavity, we can make a little bit lingualized incisions, and after the sinus segmentation and the implantation, sutures. And sometimes we can use the pin for the much more adaptations of the labial plan. And with that is uh, much more easy to surgery and also fast soft tissue healing. One is, one is later, relative fast soft tissue healing and after the second stage surgery. Due to some concavity, we making a little bit lingualized incisions and the push the gingiva to the labia side. Mm, is a videos. Very common and the small holes. And after the initial detachment, a little bit widening. And from the small instrument to a large instrument. And the osteo three collagen. And the implantations. and the flavor adaptation sutures and finished. Uh, this is a video very similar with the previous video. Mm. In this side is very good. Mm. Mm. Crystal incisions. Due to processes, we tried to make your incisions on the little bit far away from the processes. Grinding out very simply, and the initial detachment with the round instrument. And the step by step elevation, the tip must be contact inside the bony walls. After finishing and press the implant, you have finished. This is another case, also into the sinus. Bone was very thin on this side, and the bone is uh, narrow and the thin. After the sinus segmentations, and Austin 3 finally became to be very well matured. On this side, we do a bicortical fixation. 
And finally, with that, membrane is elevated a little bit at the bone formation, and the bone also very matured on the right side. And the, due to fracture of the tooth, we tried to place the root canal implant. It's a very well fixation into the root canals. And usually we try to, with the drill system, around the three to five Newton centimeter torque. And with the chemical bonding, bonding, we have a relative very good success with the bonding and the resin cement cores and the buildups and the temporaries. And finally, we'll try to make a crown on this side. And the writer grinding very similar initial detachment and the final ostensory collagen grafting implant insertion and the sutures sometimes you can use the pin or suture materials we have finished the very simply and with the scan zig and we uh, tried to make a temporary effort temporary crowns and through that, we tried to make you know, final processes. And also, canine is a poor control of the zirconia over the fractured tooth. After grazing and the insertion into the mouth, and the resin was fitted, you do a zirconia flower more, and the flow resins. Sometimes we can meet uh, some perforations. If severe, we can wait three months, this is good enough. But if uh, there are small perforations at that time, and we try the two far away detachment, and the two tension free, and but in a very rare case, there is a sinusitis. At the time, we complete removal of the graft material and the irrigation suctions and the medication. Two weeks. Usually we use the augmenting. Before also with the metronidazoles. For the fungus, but nowadays we use the only Augmenting, not so much. Next is uh, about the cluster approaches. Remaining bone height is uh, four to six millimeters. There is a various way. Also, we have tried and developed various method from the hand instrument, bone confection drill, osteotome, water freezers, and the balloons. But nowadays, we are free for to use the bone confection drill and with the hand instrument bone spreading because the sinus cavity, if you're making a bone grafting, the bone grafting is elevated like this. So key factor is spreading to the right direction is a key factor. So with the compaction drilling, and very well elevated with the hand instrument to detach to the right redirection. And this is a compaction drill, small instrument to detach to the right redirections. And after the bone grafting, bone grafting storing into the right row. Sometimes we can use the bone spread drills, but in this case, it's very rare. In, uh, usually, in this case, it's uh, sinus augmentation less than 5 millimeters. It's a safe, very successful, but sometimes if we do over the 5 millimeters elevated elevation, at the times we can use the bone spreading drills. Usually, we do recommend bone compaction drills, and the retro approach is good enough. Sometimes with the uh, bone graft materials, uh, for the lateral movement, is we are storing with the depth gauges. 
with the bone compaction drill is designed the bone graft material to the apical part and the lateral part. So during the drillings, without a, without a membrane perforations, bone is a bone graft push the membrane to the upper part. Uh, in the cases we have designed two extraction of the hopeless tooth. The after the we are waiting healing and the first the sixth implant with the, some augmentations. Is a three point seven millimeters. Usually we recommend right row approaches, but in this case we do a cluster approaches. After the compassion drilling without right row spreading, bone is elevated, but not, not so much completely well spread it is. So we at the time we must do consider about the little bit more spreading drills, spreading of the graft materials. But that was also good. But we need a little bit more spreading with the hand instrument and the bone story, bone storing. So this is a clinical cases. It's a very good indication for the sinus crestal approaches. And after that, with the uh, hand instrument, the bone was a much better spreading to the lateral directions. And after the maturation of the bone, we have a very good success with the crestal approaches. Mm, from time to time, big bone became to be matured. Another case is, in this side, we have the right approaches. In this side, after stretching, we are trying to crestal approaches. And the bone, is remaining bone height around the four millimeters. So after the lateral spreading of the bone graft material is very successful with the crestal approaches. Sometimes also we can use the bone spreader in this case this bone was very thin so bone is very well spreading at that time if you less than five millimeters we do not use but over the five millimeters augmentation at the time we use the bone spreading drills bone spreader drills can be used over the five millimeters so during the crestal approach, there is a perforations. We change the, the retro approaches, and that can be checked with the with the crossing those crossing breathings. We can face the if the air is the passed away through the crestal holes at the time the membrane is perforated. So we must check. And finally, we are presentation of the. Bicortical fixation, there is the remaining bone or over the 60 millimeters, also very successful method. After extraction and the remaining bone height around the 60 millimeters, we do a little bit bicortical fixations. Hmm. And during the drillings and the bone is the fractured and pushed in the Optical part. So finally, bone will be formed on this side and the membrane. This is a very similar case. Alveolar rich volume and the heart here was the good. With the bone compaction drills, at the time, bone can be a little bit elevated and the finishing with the final processes for the designing of the digital guide. This is a builded digital guide.
billing. Sometimes also we can use the printing. But billing is much more precise. At the time we can make making a builded resin, builded surgical guide. You make a little bit lingualized incisions and push the gingiva to the labial directions. And after the surgery, and change the, the into a scan of the month. And then making a temporary, through the temporary to the final processes, and that was the finished. And the bicortical fixation cases is a six millimeters, very similar compared to the previous cases, little bit fixation penetration into the sinus, but we can feel the some bone formation and the that was very successful. You can see on this side is uh, not so much penetrating to the sinus. And then finally we had to place the end of the implant. The so remaining bone less than seven millimeters. After the surgery we can see that and the little bit bone with the bone compaction, the really little bit movement to the crystals. Mm, is also bicortical fixation is a very successful method. And also we are waiting on this side. It's a clinical portals and the drilling. In the sec second layer, it will be collapsed. And the implant insertion, scan healing of the month, and the intraoral scanning for the temporary crown, and the after the insertion and the functional adaptation of them, and the taking for the final process that at the times we can uh, use the uh, scan of treatment or custom of treatment itself because uh, we have a memory of the custom of treatment in the server so uh, after impression and we can through the stitching procedure we can find the exact implant positions and for the final processes zirconia milling and coloring and pressed into the mouse and we have finished the uh, uh, implant treatment with a bicortical fixation. Uh, after missing of these tooth, it's the same processors, but implant became to be a bright implant system that have uh, some better scan of treatment with the flat surfaces that is good for the stitching procedure. In the end of the cases of the bicortical fixations after instruction and a little bit by cortical fixations on this side and the in this side with a very small incision and the press the implant and the scan healing of the month this is a video of them mm. Mm. It will be palatalized the small incisions and after the drilling you have to check the po length and position without any surgical guide and the step by step low speed drilling without any irrigations. The, we had placed the seven millimeter lenses implant after healing of the month, however, very good initial stability. Mm, after the surgery, mm, 
crowns. So when you usually uh, and the, after the temporary crowns, 3D printing, dentures. We do introduce the another bicortical fixation cases, and uh, also in this side, you had a very good result. And also we tried to place the implant on this side with the bicortical fixation concepts. And uh, after the surgery, we can see that it will be penetrated into the sinus if there are less than two millimeters. There is no complications. Mm. After the final processes, compared with the before, we can see with the bone is a little bit crest movement, so you can see that bone was formed like this. And for the processes, we're taking a bite tray impressions and the trimming and the spraying, and through the scan of the month, we do find the implant positions and the metal milling and the over there designing of the temporary crown and the also the model for the distal crowns and we are making an abutment level printing model is good but if you sometimes if you do a Picture level is not good for the fitness. Mm. After the temporal crown, mm. so by cortical fixation is very efficient and successful way. Sometimes we do some unfamiliar surgery like bone grafting and sinus augmentations. And the best way to be successful, we do many times simulation of the surgery, various times. Also, we, if we do some treatment plan in a difficult situations, also we do various times to the surgery in the more early morning. This is a, a video of the hand joints. I really enjoy the video of this hands from the crest to the right row approaches.